United Methodist Church. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be, nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people and people hope. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you can see, still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through Christ, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our first reading, the prophet Isaiah prays that God come down to God's people and bring them God's forgiveness. A reading from Isaiah 64, 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our equities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and delivered us into the hand of our inequity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider we are all your people. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 16 through 18. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubims. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show your light. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts. How long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Paul praises the Christians of Corinth. Later in the letters, he will berate them for their divisiveness. A reading from 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. 
The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great glory and power. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gate. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about the day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From our lesson from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, reading from the message, may all the gifts and benefits that come from God our Father and the Master Jesus Christ be yours. And then later in the message again, the Apostle continues, all God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expectantly for our Master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the finale. And not only that, but God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until all things are wrapped up by Jesus. God, who got you started in this spiritual adventure, shares with us the life of his son and our master, Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. Well, it's arrived. Advent, my favorite season of the church year. But you really get the idea of why I like this season, why I like any season, really, you have to get a little bit of background about my experience with church. When I was a kid, a neighbor lady took me to church quite frequently, and it was a fundamentalist church, very conservative church, some miles from my neighborhood. And like very many small fundamentalist churches, maybe not so small, it was congregational and that it wasn't connected to other churches like we are in the diocese or like when I was a minister in the Presbyterian church, churches were connected in the Presbytery. So it was disconnected and they paid very little heed to the notion of church seasons or a church year of any kind. Well, I mean, sure, they preached a Christmas sermon on Christmas and they preached an Easter sermon on Easter Sunday. At Christmas, we sang Christmas carols and at Easter, we sing up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. But when it came to sacred times like Lent, Pentecost or Easter, not as a day, but as a season or Advent, Really, there was just no concept. It wasn't until I was a seminarian that I encountered the idea of the church here and it revolutionized my worship life. We can think of time and space. If you hear me say time and space, you may be thinking of some old science fiction story you heard, but I'm not talking about science fiction now. I'm talking about sacred space and sacred time. Sacred space are those places where as an early Celtic Christians used to put, and I love this phrase, they said heaven and earth, the space between them is thin, very thin. And we can reach out and touch God. God is near. For some, that space might be in nature. For others, it might be at a retreat center. For me, one of my sacred spaces is St. Minor Arch Abbey in southern Indiana by Santa Claus. I've often spent two or three day days there in quiet meditation and prayer. But closer to home, I really think we all have a sacred space we can think of. Maybe we're even missing quite a bit. And that sacred space is Trinity, our church. Many things enhance that space, our candles, our altar, 
And at this time of the year, Advent wreaths, so I think we have to admit, lighting our wreaths this year is a little different than it has been before. But sacred time and sacred space is something we celebrate. And sacred time is like sacred space. Sacred time for me is when I begin each morning with a morning prayer in the daily office. It's when I'm talking to an old friend about the way God has been moving in our lives. And it's the church year. The church year marks our time for me in a collection of holy moments. I don't know if you've ever thought much about this, but I am very, very grateful of all the gifts I got several years back when I became an Episcopalian. One of the greatest is being part of a community, think about it, that marks sacred space and sacred time. It's quite a blessing. Well, sure, we're waiting for Christmas, and if we're waiting for it, it's like clockwork. This is Advent, time of waiting. What do we do every year? We wait we're for Christmas. We sing scriptures about what, sing songs about waiting. We read scriptures about waiting. But does the await ever come? What, what we await ever come? Certainly, if it's Christmas, it does. Every 25th of December, every year it comes and it's beautiful. Christmas is a miracle. It's a day of joy and wonder. The crutch, the little kids in their shepherd suits with towels wrapped around their heads. I remember my kids with the towels wrapped around their heads. Candles lit as we sing silent night. Indeed, it touches something deep within us and we are amazed. We may cry tears of joy. We know that coming Christmas and we know because we heard us so much before that we're waiting for another coming, for Jesus to come and redeem the earth even now. And maybe, just maybe, there's yet a third coming, waiting for an, a personal encounter. We're at the breaking point. Our problems are huge. Maybe our marriage is coming unglued or our family's falling apart or we're extremely lonely. Maybe we're getting older and we feel empty. Maybe we need a purpose in our life before it's too late. Or maybe we've had about all this COVID stuff we can take. Our world has turned all weird and we feel like screaming. But not just Christmas, not just a second coming to finally set the world right. No, no, we need Jesus right now. The apostle writes, God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until all things are wrapped up by Jesus. Maybe it's just me, but I think this speaks of something more, something in addition to Jesus coming in the clouds, something more than Christmas. It means at least to me more than the last trumpet. Well, maybe we should be ready for Christ's return at all times, and certainly we should, even today. Christians have been waiting a long time. But on the law of averages, after 2,000 years, and all of us, many of us, few exceptions, getting up in years, I think it's safe to say on the law of averages, it would seem like we just might not make the day when we see the clouds part and Jesus come back. Whereas the old evangelical hymn says, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, and the saved worth are gathered to the home beyond the clouds when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. The beauty of it is, even though the theology of that little ditty leaves a lot to be desired, when Jesus comes in glory to receive his kingdom, indeed, we will be there. Not because of any greatness on our part, nope. It's because God is coming to save the world. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I do know this has been the faith of the church throughout the centuries, and I don't believe God's going to disappoint us now. But what I want to think about this morning is the coming of Jesus right now. I mean your now and my now. I mean Jesus coming into our hearts by faith and love, God's love, to save us from sins and sin and sorrow, mostly in many ways to save us from ourselves. I mean whatever our immediate needs, Jesus is coming in, into our lives to repair our brokenness. Things are hard now, we're waiting. What I'm talking about is Jesus healing our brokenness as we wait right now. It may seem to you in your brokenness, and I can speak of brokenness, because we are all broken. Every one of us is broken. My spiritual director when I was in Kentucky, a Franciscan nun, told me once, I don't believe in original sin, she said, but I believe in a, an original wound. We have all been wounded by life in some way. And I think she summed it up well. In that brokenness, you may have been waiting a mighty long time, hours, days, weeks, months, years. 
It sometimes seems like we waited so long for God to come to us, to help us. You know, like the psalmist, we cry out to God, how long, O Lord? Well, I don't have the answer. But I do think that in some way, God hears, God cares, God redeems, God renews, God repairs, God restores. I've always felt like I have a purpose, but I've always thought and felt like I've never really known my ultimate purpose. I have education, but it's not a matter of education. I've been a writer, but it has nothing to do with writing. I've been a minister. I've been a teacher of children. I've been a college professor. I've been a janitor. I've been many things. And in some way, I've enjoyed them all. They're good and right. But they never seem to really fit the puzzle. Sometimes I say to God, what is my real purpose? I say, God, I'm in my 60s. I'd like to know before it's too late. When will I get my answer? Sometimes it leaves me feeling frustrated, empty, and desperate. So I wonder, when is Jesus coming to me? It's my personal advent. I'm waiting. But the truth is, you see, I don't really know God's ways or how God's timing works. In Deuteronomy, the prophet says, God, our God, will take care of the hidden things. Then he goes on to say, but the re revealed things are our business. And Paul asks, who has known the mind of the Lord or who could be God's counselor? So we may not know when Jesus is coming to us, but our text today does have something to say as we wait. The reading says, once again from the message, may all the gifts and benefits that come from God our Father and the Master Jesus Christ be yours. Later the reading says, he will never give up on you, never forget that. And so we have this word as we wait. God's gifts and benefits are ours for the having. And what is that gift? That gift that we don't really have to wait for. Well, the apostle tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal life. And that's not just pie in the sky by and by or heaven off somewhere on the cloud. The master himself said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, life in all its fullness, even now. I do believe when we worship Jesus, when we get lost in his wonder, his beauty, his love, his grace, we will have the grace to wait. We are human and it will not be easy, but as the scripture says, we can do all things through Christ, even wait. And the beauty is that we will never be alone. The word says he will never give up on you. Never forget that. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, 
that we all may be one. <clears throat> Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Bill, our priest in charge, our companion diocese, Brasilia, and their bishop, Mauricio, Bor in the Sudan and their bishop, Reuben, the people of Haiti and Zache, their bishop. <clears throat> In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pay, pray for the Lusitanian Church, extra provincial to the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Right Reverend Jorge Pina Cabral, Bishop of the Lusitanian Church. We pray for our diocese partners, St. Timothy's Indianapolis, the Reverend Rebecca Nickel, for all the baptized and all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Pray for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Eric, our governor, Thomas, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for an end to the racism and all the isms that divide God's human creation. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who are hospitalized. Does anyone have any one they wanna add? Those in convalescent centers, Teddy Fada, Anna Majolette, Sonia Hurley, Betsy Hyde, Barbara Moffat, Carol Smalley, Bonnie Conover, Joan Rout, for others in need of God's strength, Brian Bodine, Heather Caudell, Nancy Kitt, Pat Schroeder, Aubrey Sharnowski, Connie Williams, Nikki Hathaway, and Connie McAvoy. For John Albright, Amy Robertson, Chris Call, Missy Gottgold, David Zickel, Earl and Beverly Scott, Aletha Bruner Lindsay, Nikki Richmond, Beth Richmond, Nancy Ashley, Irene Eichhorn, Betty Middlebrook, John McGilvery, Fred Thompson, Marcia Ash, Maiden James, Elva Mullen, Kyle Holtzleiter, Nedra Tharp, Benny Santiago, Carol Wilburn, Ron Richardson, Betty Burrell, Judy Zinzer, Shirley Jones, and Paul Crabtree. Those who work to protect us, including the police, firefighters, and emergency personnel of our communities. We pray for our men and women in the armed forces, Audrey McGillan Cole, Chastain Gardner, Jessica Halliday, Brandon Hallowell, Greg, Chaz Hewlett, Micah Jones, Chris Call, Brian Casper, Amanda Conover McAllister, Tyler McKeon, Melissa Payne, Nathan Payne, Travis Reed, Allison Woodruff, and Zach Webb. We pray for those who are homeless, unemployed or underemployed for all who suffer from COVID-19, including Bishop Bill Smalley, Jake Jordan, Abby White, John Matthew McGilvery, Sonia Hurley, and Harrison Burrell, and for all the caregivers who look after them, for those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for our parish family, especially for Deb O'Brien and Adriana Holzleiter, whose birthdays are on Tuesday. In our daily prayers for our members, we pray today for Randy, 
Duncan, Ethan, and Isabel Titus for Becky Wages and for Kim and Debbie Webb. Give to Joanne Rout and Kelly Caldell and to all the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I'm sorry, Pat, you'll have to unmute yourself. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who offered himself to be sacrificed for us to the Father, forgives us all our sins by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In your union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar or your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing prayer, Lord of the feast, we thank you for gathering us as your people. We call to remembrance the many times that we have been fed at your table and we will lament our distance now. Be present, Lord Jesus, as you were present with your disciples. Be known to us in the breaking of the bread and may your Holy Spirit sustain us and all your church until we can gather together again. We ask this for the sake of your love. Amen.
Go in peace, rejoicing in God's presence with us. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.